Okay, today our viewer has asked, is there actually pus in pasteurized milk? It seems to be a large topic of discussion lately. Oh my, uh, such an important question. And uh, people know that I am not a big fan of drinking the milk of a cow or any other species, even though I did much of my growing up on my uncle's dairy farm in Northern Wisconsin. Uh, my milk drinking days are long past and I urge uh, you join that trend uh, because there's so many things in milk from estrogens to allergen proteins to uh, 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 hormones that promote uh, tumor growth all the way around. It's for baby calves. It's a baby calf growth fluid designed to turn a 65 pound calf into a 700 pound dairy cow. <laughs> Unless you're a baby calf who wants to be a big dairy cow, uh, don't be drinking that white liquid. Okay, that said, uh, how about this issue? There's pus in the cow's milk. And though I'm often looking for reasons not to uh, have people consume cow's milk, if I want to be absolutely rigorous in my definitions of medical terms, uh, I can't say there is actual pus in the cow's milk, uh, what is in the cow's milk. Uh, when we talk about pus, when someone has an abscess, they have a pocket of, of actual pus under their skin. And uh, we numb up the skin and we uh, nick it with a scalpel and this white, thick, creamy liquid comes out. That's pus. What's in, what's in that? Uh, there's white blood cells, but they're largely dead by now. Uh, there's debris. There's lots of proteins that have coagulated. There's the inner wall of the abscess cavity. So there's sloughed off uh, cells uh, that have uh, wound up in that white liquid. Uh, well, that's not really what's in cow's milk. The cow doesn't really have an abscess in her udder. Uh, but what she does have is a low-grade percolating infection called mastitis. Her immune system is working to beat the band, and she's putting plenty of white blood cells uh, into the uh, gland tissue in her udder that do wind up in the milk, macrophages, uh, uh, neutrophils, uh, various types of white blood cells. They're engulfing the bacteria that are finding their way up into the cow's udder. So there is a, a microbiological battle happening in that cow's udder because she's laying on her gutter, on her udder. She sleeps on it. It's this big swollen organ. They, they step on their, uh, their uh, udder. Their manure finds its way up into the udder. Uh, dairying is not a clean operation. And so there's a constant microbiologic battle going on in the uh, cow's udder. Uh, but as far as an actual abscess with actual pus, uh, no, uh, that isn't coming out. But those white blood cells and bacteria certainly do. The uh, dairy producers have standards how much of these white cells they will allow in the milk. It's usually, I think, a million white blood cells per cubic centimeter of milk. Any more than that, too many white cells. Uh, so is that pus? Not, not officially, but it is what it is. It's uh, white blood cells and bacteria uh, from this infectious process in the cow's udder. Now, does pasteurization get rid of that? When you pasteurize milk, you heat it up to 161 degrees Fahrenheit for about uh, 15 seconds. I think it's a fast uh, pasteurization these days. And uh, that does generally burst the, the uh, white blood cells, it bursts the bacteria. Uh, so the pasteurized milk probably doesn't have intact white blood cells or intact bacteria. Uh, so officially, you know, you won't find these in the milk under the microscope, but uh, do you want to drink this stuff with a bunch of broken up white blood cells with all the enzymes inside the broken up bacteria? Uh, you know, uh, by analogy, they uh, take the chicken carcasses, they're all filled with uh, fecal uh, debris, chicken manure particles, uh, and they radiate it. They put it under, uh, on the conveyor belt, they put it under a plutonium or some or a radioactive uh, isotope, and the radiation energy kills the bacteria. So now you've got irradiated feces. Uh, do you want to eat that? Even though it's irradiated, sterile, yeah, you know. Well, the same thing. With, now you've got pasteurized milk with broken up white cells and broken up bacteria. You really want to eat and drink that stuff? 
Uh, no, I, I certainly wouldn't. And so, uh, so going back to uh, answer the question in a precise terms of way it was worded, no, there isn't official pus in there, but there's a whole bunch of broken up white cells and bacteria and hormones and antibiotic and pesticides and growth promoters and all the, the things they feed those poor animals uh, and all the stress hormones, uh, et cetera. Uh, leave it to the baby calves. Uh, there's just really no reason for us to be drinking the milk of a cow any more than we drink the milk of a giraffe. Uh, and uh, I think we'll all be healthier without it, including the cows. So uh, no pus, but uh, no reason to drink the stuff either. Hi, everyone. Dr. Michael Clapper here announcing our new format for our Q&A with Dr. K. Annie Hagen will be asking me one question that's been sent in by our viewers. So if you want to see if your question is getting answered, do join us for our Q&A with Dr. K right here. Hope to see you then.